Hi, welcome to the wireless communication course at Chalmers. My name is Hank Vemish. Um, I expect that this course will be held remotely for this year, so I decided to pre-record all the lectures into small chunks. I, I hope this will work, out, will work out. It's an experiment. It's the first time I do this, but uh, let's try this at least. Uh, my plan is to have short recordings of about 15 minutes each, so let me set a timer just to make sure we do this correctly. Good, and then my idea is that you as students would watch these lectures at home, at your leisure, rewind as much as you want. And then during the lecture sessions at Chalmers or on Zoom, we will be able to have discussions and do Q&A. So I'm connected, let's see now, with PowerPoint. I hope this works too. Um, I also have a tablet to take some notes. I hope all of this stuff works as well. So let's try this. Good. Okay, so as I said, my name is Hank Kwermersch. I'm with the E2 department at Chalmers. And if you want to know more about me and the research that I'm doing, you can go to this uh, URL. And of course, all these slides are available in PDF on uh, Canvas. So in this first lecture, um, we will basically take it easy. I will welcome you with some practical, practical information. Um, discuss what are the topics that we will talk about in this course, then move on to some very basics about the wireless channel and why it is challenging compared to maybe other communication systems that you've seen before. And then we will do some uh, review of some basic math. And yeah, feel free to just skip those things if you know them already. Um, for reference, so I don't provide lecture notes with this course, but I do recommend that you um, download or buy the, the wireless communication book from Andrea Goldschmidt, at least for the first three parts of the course, because a lot of the material is based on that book. And I think it can help you to get a different perspective on the, on the topics that we cover. Um, and for this first lecture, I suggest that you read the first chapter. It's a relatively easy read and also go through the appendices, A, B, and C, because they cover some of the math material that I will talk about today. So this is the course staff for this course for this year at least so i'm hank i'll be the examiner and the main lecturer for this course and then we have two tas yasaman and nima that are available uh, for the projects as well as for the tutorial sessions if you want to ask questions to me or the tas we've reserved thursdays from 9 to 10 as office hours um, of course this will be on zoom so please just send, make an appointment with us if you want to talk about anything that we cover in the course Normally the course location will be S51. Um, I don't know, um, well now it's the end of 2020 when I'm, when I'm recording this. I don't know in 2021 what will happen if we will have some live sessions, but if we do have live sessions, they will probably be there. Um, yeah, we will set up a Canvas website where we will communicate things to you related to the course. The book, as I said, is a wireless communication book that you can um, buy through Cremona or you can download it as an ebook, as the same material. Um, it's a very good book and relatively easy to read, so I really recommend that you, you look through it. We will have 12 tutorial sessions. Um, among those, we'll also have a number of quizzes, and each of these quizzes is worth one point towards your final grade. More important than the quizzes are the MATLAB projects. We will um, form groups, as you're sure you've done in other, pro in other courses. Uh, and in those groups, you have to solve two projects, uh, relatively large projects. And they are valued at each at eight points. And um, this is a group score. And then to evaluate your kind of independent contribution, we will have an oral exam for each person in the group. We'll decide the whole group at the same time, but each person gets an, gets an individual grade, which is up to 15 points. And then there's the exam, which is a closed book exam with four questions. I will provide you all the old exams and their solutions. So you have lots of examples. And then this is the grading uh, for the course. If you want to have a grade of five or more, you need to get 80 points of all of these things combined. Good, all right. So how I see the overall goal of this course is really to, to get enough knowledge of wireless communication systems that you can start in a communication company like Ericsson, like Huawei. And to make this a bit more specific, you should be able to design and analyze 5G communication systems, in particular for massive MIMO, so which contains a very large arrays at the base station with many mobile users. 
And of course, to do this, you need to go through some steps and we will learn about the propagation channel and how it affects wireless communication. You will learn about how to design signals for communication for high rate uh, communication at low complexity. We will spend some time on sharing of resources between users and we'll spend quite a lot of time on multi-antenna communication. So before we can do that, we need to first of all define what is a wireless communication system. So um, traditionally, this is referred to as any electromagnetic wave carrying information between the band of 10 kilohertz and 300 gigahertz. In practice, we will limit our study to between 300 megahertz and 10 gigahertz. In the 5G part of the uh, course, we will go beyond 10 gigahertz, going all the way to maybe 24, 28 gigahertz. Now, what is special about the wireless channel, um, in contrast to, for instance, the wired channel that you've seen in, in previous courses, is that the channel is shared. So many users share the same propagation medium, and this can lead to interference. And also the channel varies over time, in part because the users are moving, but also because the environment is moving. So things in the environment are, are moving. Cars are driving, trees are rustling. Um, and this makes the design a bit challenging because the, the channel changes over time. And so because of this, we need to allocate the resources that we have. So this is power, time and frequency in a way that you don't disturb uh, both other users, but also other communication systems that may live on the same communication band. Now, to make this a bit, a bit more mathematical, but not too much, the standard additive wide Gaussian noise channel that you've seen before um, has this basic model, right? Yk is xk plus wk. K is discrete time. XK is the data signal. So this could be a QAM symbol, right? WK is the noise, typically complex Gaussian, and YK is the observation. And then the, the goal is really to recover XK from YK. And then there could be modulation design and maybe coding to, to help you with this to work in very low SNR. Now in the wireless channel, things become a bit more complicated. So this is the how the equation, the basic model would look like for the wireless channel. Um, the observation at time k, still discrete time, now is a superposition of transmitted signals at different times. So yk depends on xk, but also xk plus 1 and xk minus 1, each, each uh, multiplied with a complex number. So this is the channel, hlk. So here l should be seen as a tap index, right? So l goes from minus l1 to l2. And k is time, so that the channel has certain delay and also varies over time. We again have noise, this is at the front end of the receiver, but then there could also be interference. So this could be signals that are intended for other users, not for you. So as a simple example, um, I consider here a three-tap channel, so where I guess L1 and L2 are equal to 1. So then the observation at time k is the transmitted signal at time k multiplied by the channel, tap at zero at time k, plus the transmitted signal at time k minus one, and then the channel tap one at time k, and also the, the transmitted signal at time k plus one, so that's a future transmission multiplied by the channel tap minus one, so that's an anti-causal channel tap at time k, plus noise and interference. Right, so we will talk a lot about how to model this channel, these h's, how they change over time, how they change over frequency, um, how to estimate them and how to recover the data from this observation. Okay, so we see that the, the observation suffers from inter-symbol interference. So each observation depends on past and possibly future transmitted symbols. Or in other words, this channel is dispersive. It spreads out the data. The channel also varies over time. So that's this K that, that you see here. So if this K was not there, the channel would still be dispersive, but would be stationary. It, it never changes. And there could be interference from other users with this IK. Right. So then the first part of this course is really to understand how this channel works statistically and then to design a good communication system to operate over this channel. And to do this, we will rely on a number of tools from linear systems, linear algebra, statistics, random variables, and digital communication that you've seen before in other courses, and some of which we will recover, uh, recap today. So the overall structure of the course will be um, as follows. That's at least what I plan right now. So there will be four parts. The first part is all about the wireless channel. How does this channel behave? How to simulate it? 
to how to model it and a large part of the project will also deal with this. Then once we understand the channel, we will evaluate how is communication performance affected by sending data over this channel. And you will see that the wireless channel is very different from the additive white Gaussian noise channel from previous courses. And actually the channel turns out to be really bad. So you, you have an enormous performance loss compared to the additive white Gaussian noise channel. And to mitigate this loss, we will look at different techniques such as diversity, which basically means that you send the same thing multiple times over independent channels, hoping that one of the transmissions will get through. And also water filling, which is that if the channel is changing over time, when the channel is good, you send lots of data. When the channel is bad, you don't send much data. Then with this basics uh, of, of how to communicate over the wireless channel um, under your expertise, then we go on to a little bit more sophisticated technologies and methods such as OFDM. So which is the, the practical way to deal with dispersive channels and create many parallel non-interfering channels. Now you will learn about multi-user communication, so how to separate users. You will learn about MIMO, so multi-antenna communication in lecture 10. And then the last part is about more advanced topics. So there I will no longer rely on the book, but uh, use more research papers to talk about 5G MSF MIMO. And I will also spend um, one part of this part four on radio localization. So how to use radio signals or communication signals to do positioning, which is my own area of expertise. Good, so then the rest of this lecture will be just some uh, basic concepts. So we will talk about difference between passband and baseband signals, uh, dB and linear scale, Fourier transforms, some convolution, random variables, detection theory, and a little bit about convex optimization. But there should be no S here. So first of all, uh, passband, and, passband and baseband signals. Um, on the left here, I, I write what is a standard baseband signal. So AK here are complex numbers. These are your data bearing symbols like QAM, uh, drawn from a QAM constellation. P of T is a pulse. T is the signaling period, right? So one over T is the rate at which you send those symbols. And then the superposition of all of these pulses is the transmitted signal. And this is what it could look like. So it has a real part and an imaginary part. And then at the receiver side, um, I, I convolve this transmitted signal with the complex channel plus noise, and I have my received baseband signal. Of course, you don't send anything complex over the air. What you do is you generate a passband signal. So the passband signal is obtained by taking the baseband signal, up converting it to the carrier frequency. So FC could be many gigahertz um, and taking the real part. And then this is what the passband signal looks like. And it only has a real part, no imaginary part. And you can go back and forth between the two. So give, if I give you a passband signal, you can recover the baseband signal and vice versa. And then you have also a received signal in the passband domain. So the received passband signal is the transmitted signal multiplied with a complex, with a real passband channel plus noise. Okay. And you can go again from one to the other um, through these equations. So almost all of the course will be in baseband, so using complex numbers, but you should not forget that what you send over the air is the real passband signal. Uh, we will often use decibels or dB. So when you have um, a number X, and you convert it to the dB domain. You, this is uh, by taking 10 log 10. And here X is a dimensionless non-negative uh, number. So there should be a positive number for this logarithm to hold and we get X in dB. Uh, when X has a dimension of Watt, then we can divide by one milliwatt and convert to dB. And then we have X in dBm. And often this course, I will go from one to the other, and it's up to you to, to kind of understand what I'm talking about. Uh, we will also sometimes use power and energy. So power is expressed in watt, and energy is power times time is expressed in joule. Um, especially when we do OFDM, we will use some Fourier transforms. So the notation here is the one that I use in this course. There's many variations of this with some square root of two, but this I think is the easiest one. Uh, so S of T is the signal in the time domain, and then by taking, multiplying with this exponential and integrating, I find the Fourier transform, and I can go back from the Fourier, from the Fourier transform to the time domain by taking this uh, exponential with a different sign, integrating over all frequencies, and I get S of t back. Now, 
I will not ask you to do lots of Fourier analysis, but it's good to bear in mind some, some special cases. So first of all, um, when you have, let's see the time. Okay, I have only 26 seconds left. So let me just uh, finish this slide. Stop my timer. Yeah. So when you have a signal in the time domain, that's this kind of pulse. If you convert it to the frequency domain, you get something flat. And in general, something that's narrow in the time domain is broad in the frequency domain. Something that's broad in the time domain, it will be very narrow in the frequency domain. Okay, so something that's flat in the time domain will be a peak in the frequency domain. Uh, another interesting signal in the time domain is this boxcar signal. So it's zero and then one and then zero again. And if you go to the frequency domain, you get a sync function. And you see the width of this function, the time domain is D, then the width in the frequency domain is one over D. So the wider in the time domain, the narrow in the frequency domain and vice versa. All right, so this uh, will end this first lecture and then uh, hopefully see you soon for the next lecture. Thank you.